All right, Ellen. Oh, I'm not still brooding about losing the showdown of the week trophy to outside Xbox, are you? Well, with that extra two points, that puts outside Xbox over the top. We do have a champion of the showdown of the week 2018. Our new champions, outside Xbox, everyone. Please. Well done, well done. Mm -hmm. Hanging in. You art school with you. <laughs> so. Here's your trophy. Well done. Yes. yes. Here it is. Yes. Trophy, anyway, and hey, I got I got voted uh, for a different award. I got I got voted most awesome dad. Uh, Ellen, that's just a novelty mug. Correction, it's a novelty mug with M and M's in it. Oh, give me some. No. Oh, but fifty percent of those are mine. Oh, very mature. Show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend. Do you want one? Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> Something about having to pick up all those last ones off the floor that made me, <laughs> made me lose my appetite. <laughs> Put them down there. We'll eat them later. Get my nose all up in there and eat them like, like if you're feeding it to a horse. This episode has already gone so far <laughs> awry. Um, <laughs> Tomb Raider, you've oh, been playing it. Yeah, and Shadow of the yeah. Tomb Raider. I, I've actually finished it. <gasps> wow, um, wow. Got, well done. I finished most of it in the first weekend that it came out. Basically, I wasn't well, so I was like, I've got an excuse to stay indoors for a few days, so I'm going to play this. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. That's what you don't get in a written review. <laughs> written some reviews in my time and it's very hard to get across what you can get across in a simple face and a noise. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, what more do you need to know? Okay, so break it down for me, Ellen. Right. Break it down. Well, first off, I'll say the things that I love about it. And what I love is... Shouldn't take long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I absolutely love the new mechanics that they put in. Stealth kills and all oh, yeah. that sort of stuff. Shoot an arrow at them and it's got a poison in them and it turns them against their friends before they oh, finish yeah. themselves off. Sure. And that's been done in many a stealth oh, game. Oldest trick in the book. I love the new ability with a bow to be like and then hanging them up and blah, blah. it's all very Batman. Yeah. It's very fun. But Lara just outright kills them. Covering herself in mud oh, yeah, and that's hiding cool. in the foliage. I love that. There's some mechanics in this game that they've added which I think are brilliant. I think they add to it. But at the Thumbs same up. time... Square Enix, stop watching now. <laughs> <laughs> but they've taken some things away. With this game, they want you to play stealthily. So Ugh. if you are found, there's no point. You have to just run and hide. Like, that's Ugh. your only option, really. There's not as much choice in this game when yeah. it comes to the combat areas. You don't get that bit where you're discovered in a game and you're like, well, I guess we're doing this yeah. the loud way. <laughs> As a stealth player, I'm very much like, no, I want I want to hide, I want to hide. And what I liked about the previous two games was as much as I want to do more puzzling than combat, when it did come to the combat, I was like, oh gosh, they've thrown a grenade. Okay, I'm going to shuffle over here. And it was just so high octane and fun that when it came to those puzzly moments, I was like, okay, chill out. Yeah, yeah. I felt like there wasn't enough puzzling. Okay. But in this game, they've gone completely the other way, where there's hardly any combat sections. Okay. And when they are, it's like stealth. That otherwise you just die. That's what it okay. felt like for yeah. me. Didn't you have some like quite bad glitches? Yeah, that's the other thing. This game is super buggy. And I don't mean the fact that it's just got bugs in it because it's set in the jungle. Firstly, there's like not really a bug, but it's slightly annoying. To interact with anything, you press X. Sure. But if two things are close together, you really have to be standing in the oh, right that's position. So annoying. The problem is, is that if you fill up, she's like, I can't pick up anymore. It's impossible. I don't have enough space for that. 26th of November, 1603. Every single time, I didn't mean to click on the berries, but right next to it is a tree. Oh. She'd harvest the tree, but at the same time be like, I've not got enough room for those berries. And it's just like... Oh, that's such a, that's such like a little <laughs> microaggression, yeah. isn't it, in games? Can't carry anymore. I just got really oh, sick of man. hearing Lara's voice. Um, <laughs> which isn't good, because you're supposed good. to want to hear her voice, yeah. You pick up items that you find around the world, and there are often diary entries. Mm. Now, in the previous two games, yeah. all of the diary entries would be read out by a different voice actor who is being the person who wrote it. Cool. We will not stop until these invaders are dead. Only then will our secret be safe. In this, 
Lara reads everything in a slightly bored, monotone voice. Oh, I can just imagine it. Follow the Napo to the Amazon. Nothing but jungle for weeks. Phillips got the fever and I had to drag the bastard through this forsaken jungle for the last few days. Oh, and there is a thing in that. Mesopotamia. Yeah. And there's one she finds where Trinity have like basically been like, oh, she'll be easy to indoctrinate because she's not as smart as her dad. And she's reading it like this. You know, they don't think I'm oh, as so smart as my dad. Mm -hmm. Although intelligent, she is less focused on the meaning and history of the artifacts she seeks and more prone to risk taking. Nip, nip. Oh. And I'm like, oh, I don't care right now about you, Laura. Oh no, <laughs> then, that's such a shame. That's the thing, like, I, I loved her in the previous two games. Like, you love Lara Croft. I love Lara Croft. My experience with the game is far more limited. Yeah. Um, I have played up to a certain point, though I don't think it would be too spoilery at, no. at this point to discuss. Lara kicks off the events of the game, if you will, by um, starting <laughs> yeah. the apocalypse, yeah, 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 which, yeah. you know, is a bad thing. Yeah. But there's a bit where a kid falls into a river and uh, it's like, oh my god, a kid died. And then the next, the next words out of Lara's mouth are like, oh, my father. After everything that my father went through, I gave Trinity exactly what they wanted. All of his hard work is going to let him down. It was like, whoa, Lara. It's understandable, like, she's seeing the bigger picture and her friend Jonah is there to be like, like no, Jonah. let's help the people who are here now who need our help now. Yeah. He grounds her. I think the problem is, is they rely too much on Jonah to do all the groundwork. Oh, uh, yeah. So it ends up being like, I wish I could play the Jonah the game. He yeah. seems nice. Jonah's lovely. Yeah, yeah. You meet some new characters. There's a new character that you meet once you get to like the big city area, Paititi. Yeah. She's great, she's fairly grounded and interesting and again I would rather be playing as her than Lara. In this game what they have done is they've taken away the whole, you know, Tomb Raider is like Lara being on her own yes. and like she has those brief moments with friends but most of the time it's on her own. She spends a lot of time talking to a lot of NPCs that you don't care about and right. are just really annoying and uh... they've added in a merchant system which I hate. <laughs> you have made an excellent choice, my friend. I am certain you will find it useful. I am certain you will find it useful. You have made an excellent choice, my friend. I am certain you will find it useful. Instead of Lara being able to find resources around the world to make everything herself or like find things that have been left behind by others, yep. she has to go to merchants. So you have medium ammo pouch and large ammo pouch. You can't buy the large ammo pouch unless you've bought the medium ammo pouch already. Oh. Now that made sense when you made things because you make the medium one and then you upgrade it to a large one. Yeah, it's you like, sew no, on a little extra you pocket. You can't buy the extra large bag of M&Ms unless you've bought a small Wall bag and then first, and it's like that's not how trading works. That's annoying. So that was annoying. And then there's one merchant, this lady that you meet at the end of a quest. Yeah. I did this quest before I had enough money to buy all of the things off of her. So I bought one thing, and I was like, right, I'll come back to her later. One was like a lock pick. And then mm -hmm. another thing was the rope caster. She's the only one that has them. Mm. And she randomly moves around the map, <sighs> and it's not marked on the map where she is. <laughs> Amazing. So I had to go on a forum, try and Long check all the, different, fans. Yeah, yeah. all the different locations, and then eventually found her and could buy, and I bought all the things that I could off of her. And, and then killed it. her. Come see what I have to trade. Well, like, you're supposed to kind of like hear her because she's got a friend with her who plays the drums, but if you find her in Paititi originally is where she is, there's the guy playing the drums, and then you walk around the corner and there's three other guys playing drums. So it doesn't help at all. <laughs> Nuts. And then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then yeah, yeah. on one other occasion, I went to one of the merchants to buy outfits. Yeah. Because I was trying to buy all the outfits because I want to try and like 100% everything, even though as well, the outfits are pointless other than <laughs> tying down who you can talk to. And so you were trying to buy all the pointless outfits? Yeah, just to try and see if I could get 100% because I. Just to try and have some because, fun. <laughs> because I've got everything, I found all the artifacts. <laughs> But my artifact collection isn't complete either. That's at 87%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, when all the map says that I've done 100% of everything. It's so broken. So yeah, I tried to buy these outfits and it bugged out and I lost 7,000 coins. <laughs> and I was just like, what? Oh, well. So I like reloaded. I tried it again and I bought one of the things and it still bugged out. And I was like, <laughs> oh, well. I just wanted to buy the shoes. <laughs>
Pleasure doing business with you. Ellen Rose and the quest <laughs> to have any fun in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Ellen's big like, adventure. Do you want to know something? To get that money back, what I did <laughs> was I killed a ton of spiders. Which I was okay with because they're small on the screen, so it was fine. Spider venom or whatever it is that you use, that's like 180 <laughs> coins to sell. Whereas to sell jaguar or leopard pelts, they're only 100. Okay. And you have to kill a thing that's trying to eat your face off. Spiders just sit there. So. <laughs> so the spiders are a good gold farming. Yeah. Of, okay, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. There's rare animal skins where in the previous game you would have to go and find an animal and hunt it down and that would be an extra task. Okay. In this one, the side quest of go and kill this is just pointless because you find them everywhere else under a rock. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this game sounds fantastically unenjoyable. It's it's just not balanced. Oh, bless you for finishing it. <laughs> it sounds miserable. Like, it's not a bad game. Yeah. It's just that I'm a big Tomb Raider fan. It, and I was yeah. I was looking forward to this final, you know, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think they just took it in a slightly weird direction. I don't know why we had to have hubs with loads of people in it that you go and talk to. That's not why yeah. I play Tomb Raider games. Um, like, they made a big thing of, oh, it's got the largest hub area ever. And it's like, yeah, it's full of annoying. NPCs. I sort of get the same impression as you that it's not a bad game but it's been such a good year for games and the yeah. competition is so fierce. Yeah. It sounds like it compares very poorly with the last two Assassin's Creed games and I'm yeah. counting Odyssey in that which yeah. has been very well reviewed. Was, the thing is I, I absolutely adored Rise of the Tomb Raider. It wasn't a perfect game Yeah. but I was looking up for that next step up. For those of you who don't know like the behind the scenes of it it was worked on between Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal with Crystal Dynamics like taking the lead on it. But this time, Eidos Montreal took the lead on it. And also, this game has a new writer. It's not Rihanna Pratchett. Yeah. So, she left on, like, good terms. I don't know the full thing, whether she had another project that Maybe she, she was just to, busy or something. But, but I was you think, just yeah. like, I was like, Rihanna Pratchett? <laughs> Rihanna, come back! <laughs> it was a fun game, but in terms of, it wasn't Tomb Raider. And Lara was really annoying. Oh, that's such like, a shame. And this was supposed to be her, like, kind yeah. of hardening up and being, like, no, I am the Tomb Raider now. I, oh. I'm finding it. Hang on, hang on. I've got notes. This Come is it. this is this is really good. <laughs> there were things. Yeah. Lara Croft kept saying things in a slightly American way. She says status instead of status. Status. Thanks, John, for that sigh. We just got a very um, deep and concerned sigh from camera. There were times it. where NPC lips weren't moving when they were talking to you, which <laughs> happened a lot. So they'd just be like and saying loads of stuff to you. Oh, there's a bit of uh, a mechanic in the games where you find artifacts and then sometimes you can find hidden information. Mm. Uh, hold on. This one has six on most of the faces. This just seemed to be they did it on random objects and they added no extra information. I wonder how it ended up here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, there's challenges. Now, challenges. Yep in the previous game, you would walk around and find weird things. There'd be walkie-talkies hanging from strings, and That's you're like, odd. what's the story what here? Is that? You either shoot it with a gun or an arrow because you're like, what's going on here? And then it's like, challenge, you have to shoot all of them down. And Aha. it was very intuitive. In That's this good. one, yeah. the challenges aren't unique at all. And there was one where it was like, pick flowers in this particular area. And I was like, I keep being told by Lara that she doesn't have enough room to pick up anything. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the side things that really added to the game for me, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. especially in Rise of the Tomb Raider, seemed so rushed and they were like, oh, just, yeah, we'll just do five of those things, but in different places. Like shoot down these cursed human skeletons, but they've added wings. And I got all of them and then I went in a tomb and I saw them everywhere and I was like, Okay, they're not a thing anymore. What? It was just really confusing and not very... <laughs> What's next on the list? Um, oh yeah, also, you can unlock a thing to make those challenges turn gold so that you can more easily find them. Okay. And it didn't work half the time. However, I have just ranted about all of this and I like, if, if you want the full lowdown, I will happily <laughs> sit and <laughs> Like you will be there for hours, okay? You're, you're watching the edited version. <laughs> Let me tell you, you don't want the full lowdown. <laughs> Avoid the lowdown. One thing I do want to say is that right near the beginning of the game, there's a bit, which I won't say what it is and I won't spoil, but it's like about 
an hour, two hours into the game, yeah. it blew my mind and I loved it. Okay. And I was like, if we'd had more stuff like this. So that I can keep playing it up to that point, but no further. Give me the code word. I think it's after you fight. First, like, little All right, so I should thing. kill the leopard you kill and that, then do the next and bit. And then there's a cutscene and then it's like a thing. And then there's a thing. Happens. And then we're That's out. That's brilliant. And then that is brilliant. And I think in. you cool. in particular will like it. Oh, nice. That was when I was like, I have total faith in this game because this is great. And then the end was a bit. No, yeah. it's 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 really, really interesting hearing you talk about it, joking aside, because it sounds like a game that's just so full of like little itty bitty like quality of life abrasions that you don't expect from a game of that scope yeah, I... with that budget. And, okay. and in this day and age, when, when other games are doing, or offering a much smoother, polished I was just experience. Like, I'd rather play Horizon Zero Dawn. I really wanted this game to be good. And so, like, it meant that I was less forgiving of the more obvious things that I didn't like. Yeah, and okay. Then, so that makes I, sense. That makes I, sense. My main gripe with the whole thing is that story wise, there is a lot of stuff that you do not understand okay. unless you have found every single document. The main characters in the game often jump to conclusions. Right. And then you find all the documents and you're like, oh, it makes sense now. Also, when you clear out an area in the previous games, you could go back. Because Trinity are a huge corporation who can just refill areas with more goons. There, you clear them out, you've cleared them out. So, if you miss that achievement, killing three guys in three seconds by using all the time slow things, oh, that you haven't unlocked until the end of the game, right. that's it, you have to start a new game on New Game Plus. Which is why they've probably done that, is to make you play the game again. But I don't want to play the game again. <laughs> yeah. Basically, my summary is when I finished Rise of the Tomb Raider, I wanted to wipe it from my memory so I could play it again. When I finished Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I wanted to wipe my memory and pretend I never made it and it didn't. I'm like, and that's so harsh because it's honestly a good game. It's not a bad game. It's totally fine. I'm just being, I'm saying this as a perfectionist, you are, like, oh, it's not right. Yeah, you are. And a, it's just, I'm being. You are a Tomb Raider super fan. You have very, very high yeah, standards. Yeah, because some, some when it comes people were Lara. very, like, angry at reviewers for not giving it perfect 10s and stuff and they were like oh they're not real Tomb Raider fans and I'm like mm, I'm honestly a big fan <laughs> <laughs> it's not as good as it should be well but Ellen yeah. I don't think you're going to get uh, more concise or more damning than I, I wanted to wipe I my just, memory just... the whole experience <laughs> shall we <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what I want from it anymore. I don't know what I want. You don't know what you want, but you know you're not getting it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, Ellen, why don't we move on to, 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 to another series that I know you're a big fan of yeah. that hopefully won't upset or disappoint in quite the same way and talk about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yay! Greece hides many dangers, a land shaped by the gods, but shattered from within. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the biggest Assassin's Creed game yet, a sprawling RPG set in ancient Greece that, like last year's Origins, goes back to the ancient world to tell its story of a mercenary and descendant of King Leonidas I of Sparta. Ellen. In Odyssey, for the first time ever, you'll get a choice of who you play as throughout this gigantic open world game. You can choose to play as Cassandra with her incredible side braid or Alexios. Ellen, you've had the good fortune to play a lot of the game already. There must be some reason to choose Alexios, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's what I figured. I played uh, as Cassandra when I, when I first played before the game was announced, so. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, we were very lucky to be able to go to a preview event. When they announced at E3 that you can play as a, a dude yeah. or a lady, and like I was, I had my phone out ready because I knew that that announcement was eventually going to come along, and they were like, that's, that's not the only thing you can choose on your adventure because they'd done all the like choices in. Things. It was the big surprise and then I was reveal. Like, Phone out, and then like there was a group uh, of ladies across the way from me who were just like, <laughs> like yeah. capture that moment. <laughs> I played as her for three hours, and then we were when we were at E3, um, we played as Alexios just to have a little bit of different capture, see from like what his capture looks like and how he animates and stuff. And I was like, I didn't, I, and then I didn't know whether it was because. I'd already just bonded with Cassandra because I'd played yeah. three hours as her. 
Um, but I think she's a bit more like, like she's like feisty. I mean, I mean that's such a stereotypically female character yeah, like things to say. Badass oh, female leads. Yeah, feisty, feisty one. Sassy. But like, yeah. but I know she, what you she's, mean. She's more animated. It's got substance. And he's he's trying to be like, oh, I am a, a warrior, and blah, blah, blah. and she's just like, come on, let's do this. And I'm like, yes. Also, excellent braid. It's Great. just so good. So Great I'm on just topic like, side yeah, braid. Yeah, 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 Totes yeah. approach. <laughs> Okay, well, that was the answer I was expecting. Yep. No reason to play as Alexios. Mm. Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> as we've discussed, Odyssey introduces two new assassins to mm. the Creed canon. Ooh. But answer me this. If you were planning a road trip and there was space in the van for three <laughs> other people, which assassins would you invite and who would get to ride shotgun? I think it would be Cassandra. Okay. Because I, I like how sassy she can be. And also I have a choice slightly in what she says because it's all about choice. Oh yeah, that's true, yeah, 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 okay. Um, so I can be like... <laughs> so you're like, do we need to stop for a bathroom break? Cassandra, what do you think? And you should be like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're like, that I agree. <laughs> oh, there's a Burger King at this next one. <laughs> Cassandra, could you go for a Burger King? Yes. Good. Yes, you could. <laughs> you know, I also am hungry. I think like, yeah, Cassandra would be like, I don't yeah. think, completely controlling what she says, but like, I think she'd be on yeah, your yeah, level. Yeah. She'd be on your side though, yeah. when you're voting for like music to yeah, play exactly, and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, exactly. And then also like traditional Greek music is great. I mean, I'm not sure about how far back <laughs> in, in ancient don't, Greece. Don't give her the traditional like, Greek music. Blow her mind with the Beastie Boys. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of a more contemporary pop music reference than the Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys. <laughs> pop on some Aerosmith. <laughs> Have you heard of the Beatles? <laughs> Get a load then, of these bad lads then, from Liverpool. And then what I would do <laughs> You killed John. <laughs> and then it's got to be the Fry Twins. Oh, both of them. I think both of them. Because you need both of them. I knew Evie them. was a shoe in Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then Jacob is the one that we all pick on in a, in a loving way. Sure. Because he's so easy to pick on. Sure. He's and the one like, who has to... He's si the one, yeah. he's the one he, he'll take it, he'll la like laugh along. He's and the one who has to point. siphon petrol and like, end up <laughs> swallowing some petrol. While you're all in Burger King, it'd be like, Jacob, go fill her up. You just like prod yeah. them. They'd be like hitting, Annoy each other. hitting each other. Oh no, it'd be a nightmare. It'd be like, Ellen, Cassandra. <laughs> Jacob drank my juice! No, Evie wouldn't be like that. <laughs> Alright. She'd just whack him with all right. a cane. Then Jacob would be like, head. Evie drank my juice! <laughs> and you'd all be like, Shut Lol. up, Jacob. <laughs> Shut up, Jacob. And listen to Brokal Harem. <laughs> Ellen, Assassin's Creed Odyssey lets you upgrade your character with devastating combat moves, including the iconic Spartan Kick, which I but <clears throat> There it is! Which I believe you tried on a bear. Here's yes. a clip. I can't think of anything I'd rather see right now than a Spartan kick on a bear. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bear. Fun fact, Mike won't shut up about that. Anyone who said, oh, I played uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you go, did you kick a bear in the face? <laughs> Ellen did, it was great. He's like a proud dad. Yeah. <laughs> Smiling from the touchline. Like, oh, kicked a bear in the face, it's great. <laughs> see that, other dads? <laughs> That's my Ellen. Oh, is that bear your son? <laughs> but Ellen, although your Spartan kicks were tough, which animal in nature has the deadly has the most deadly kick? According to a BBC article I read this morning that was clearly aimed at young children. <laughs> what animal do you think has the deadliest kick? Probably a kangaroo or an ostrich. Kangaroos do come up occasionally when you're researching strongest kicks in nature. Or maybe a cassowary. Cassowaries do as well and you are close with a cassowary. This article likes the secretary bird. A very- <laughs> It's got that fast typing. Um, it's a very large, mostly terrestrial bird of prey that scientists found could deliver five or six times its own body weight in a tenth of the time it takes a human to blink. It's good though, they'd like- <laughs> It's more of a stamp than a kick, but it's, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey takes us back to ancient Greece. And, unlike uh, some other Assassin's Creed games, this one is not shy about getting fully into the mythology of the area. For example, here's Medusa. The shield's down. Go get. Spartan Go. kick. Oh. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. I mean, that. It's going to be tough to walk that off. Mm hmm. 
That's my There we go. That's my juice. <laughs> no, literally turned every viewer to stone. <gasps> oh, man. And can I just say to <laughs> Are they going to click the like button? <laughs> they'll fall on it like clang. <laughs> but Ellen. Yes. Greek myths are weirder than we can imagine. Mm -hmm. Let's play Greek myth, what happens next? Yay! First off, the story of Kronos, father of Zeus, was the youngest of the first generation of Titans. Kronos learned from Gaia and Uranus, no laughing, that he was destined to be over- wasn't before, but no. <laughs> That he was destined to be overcome by his own sons, just as he had overthrown his father, and as a result, he- you're in, you're in charge of all the Titans, and you've just yeah. received a prophecy that your children are going to overthrow you. What's your next move? Send your Titans after the children. The answer is, as a result, he devoured them all as soon as they were born to prevent the prophecy. Right. Yeah. Okay, so he ate Zeus. He, yeah. Actually, no. Um, <laughs> he ate all the other one, all his other kids, but. Um, Zeus's mum was like, oh, I like Zeus, I want to keep him. So in, so she took Zeus somewhere else and wrapped a rock in a nappy and he ate that instead. And he was like, oh, that didn't go down very smooth. <laughs> but it meant that Zeus survived. And overthrew him. Arachne was a talented mortal weaver who challenged Athena, goddess of wisdom and crafts, like god of Etsy, to a we <laughs> to I a we mean, she's, <laughs> she's got a whole city named after her. Athena, well, yeah. <laughs> Etsytopia. <laughs> Who challenged Athena, goddess of wisdom and crafts, to a weaving contest. And won. But you shouldn't win in a competition against a god, Ellen. No. And because of this insult, what did Athena do to Arachne? Turned her into a spider by Correct. any chance. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Theseus and Pirithus wanted to kidnap Persephone, but her wily husband Hades, mm -hmm. voiced by James Mason, <laughs> tricked them. So when they sat down to a banquet, they became affixed to their chairs. Heracles, who some know as Hercules, later came to rescue Theseus. But as he pulled him off the chair that he was stuck on, what happened? His legs were stuck there forever and he just pulled him in half or something? Close. Part of his buttocks remained stuck to the seats. <laughs> One account claims this is why Athenians have small butts. <laughs> Which is not something that I thought was a thing. But hey, that is one account of the ancient myth. <laughs> Theseus stuck to the chair. Now was... I'm going to be playing Odyssey in like, where, how big are their butts? How big are their butts? <laughs> ah, well, of course. It's because... Also, that's not how DNA works. You know, if my great grandfather had had half of his butt stuck to a chair. It doesn't affect my butt. <laughs> Anyway, we've planned the perfect road trip. We've delved into ancient <laughs> Greece. And we've, we've talked about Spartan kicking a bear. So I think we've learned an awful lot about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, mm -hmm. uh, which sounds really cool, actually. It, the reviews have been very good. I can't wait to play it. I have absolutely loved what I've played so far. So awesome, I can't awesome, wait to awesome. dive in. Uh, but, the Mediterranean Ocean. but what should we dive into next, Ellen? I think we should dive into the comments. The comments. <laughs> perfect 10. Last week we looked at some of the less heroic uses for Spidey's powers in Marvel's Spider-Man, including some of the more injury-inducing ones. Exactly how survivable do you think it is to be kicked off a rooftop by a man strong enough to stop a runaway train? Aha, you're doubtless thinking, but those villains simply end up webbed to the side of a building, wriggling in a way that indicates they're clearly still conscious. Banquet 42 had some questions regarding webbing. With the guys that get webbed to the side of buildings, don't the webs disintegrate after a few hours? Is there a cleanup crew following Spidey round, or do they all just fall to their death after being forced to hang there? I suppose technically gravity kills them, so loophole! Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm sure that the web stays there just long enough for them to be safely taken down. Yes, but uh, Mega Nightmare 4 has some concerns that maybe the webs are too good sometimes. Also, you can totally web people onto train tracks. And spoiler, the train doesn't stop. Uh, but it's the train that kills them, so... Loophole? Also on the channel. <laughs> Jane and I looked at some of the games out this October, but mainly the only one that matters. I think in that early trailer about um, Red Dead Redemption 2, Arthur Morgan was a little, little bit of a baddie, a little bit villainous. Yeah. But then we don't know what his arc is. That may be him at the beginning, and, and by the end of it, he's 
I don't know, maybe he's the one that helps John Marston get, get the heck out of there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But then you think John Marston would have mentioned him at least once <laughs> in Red Dead Redemption. Many of you mentioned the one member of the Oxbox crew who would be particularly excited about this upcoming cowboy adventure, including Ian Hader, who said, I assume Andy's already camping out in front of a game store to get his copy of Red Dead 2 instantly. <laughs> yes, in fact, we've uh, made him some sandwiches that we're going to take him down later. Yeah, uh, I think he said he liked barbecue ranch, yeah, right? Uh, actually, actually, hi. Um, I pre-ordered the game. I won't be camping out. It's a pretty simple system. You just take the game, put your name down, and then collect it. When it comes out, you guarantee the copy. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. I will have the sandwiches, though. Thanks. Uh, yes, thank you, Andy. Uh, finally, we had fun on Show of the Weekend last week, where we made a bit of a splash. Should we worry the water's up to our ankles now? Mm, if it gets to our knees, I'll call a plumber. Now, there were some concerns when it came to water levels, with the price of Sam saying, if it gets to our knees, is that Ellen's or Luke's knees? This is important. Well, obviously my knees, and not just because of the height. One of them is particularly important. Why is that? Well, my knee makes the world go round. Oh. Want to be annoyed, but that was damn good. We also had a laugh with another member of the team. Oh, that's interesting. So, <laughs> depending on how long you take to answer your dad's calls in the morning, varies how much he yells at you. <laughs> because he is not dealing with his own trauma. Well, I'm glad you're all so amused. Oh, I just realised I've forgotten something. Cameraman John, can you throw me that plaid shirt? Many commenters, including Roger Frawley, were confused and slightly concerned. Um, cameraman John? Where is James? The people must know! It's fine, our filming schedule's just changed a bit, so now not only do we have cameraman James, but we also have cameraman John! Come, Come on in. in, John! Right, you've been thinking about this all morning, tell the people what they need to hear. Web. Amazing. Thank you, John. That's astounding. I promise I wouldn't cry. Are you ready? Are you ready for art? Yes. Yes, I you am. are. Oh yeah. <laughs> Check out what Ivan Brun has done. Look. Oh How cool my is goodness. this? Sent us on Twitter. Jamming on the harmonica. Jamming like crazy. It's so cool. Out of the week. She did very well for someone who can't play the harmonica. <laughs> I'm enjoying this, even though uh, this is obviously you know part of us losing. <laughs> The trophy, but I'd look at this image and it genuinely just like calms me down. Yeah. It feels in. It's so it's cheerful. Really, it's really lovely. It's really, it's really, really nice. Really nice. Thank you very done. much. Next up, this is Kuyu <gasps> EX3. Okay, so context for this is you remember we were talking about Spider Man, how we. There you web. go, web. How we use uh, photo mode, yeah. and I use it to try and take good cinematic uh, images that really show off the graphical yeah, capabilities yeah. of the game. And I'm like. Yeah! <laughs> Selfie! Wait, no. <laughs> this is me, this is both of us as one or more Spider Men. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. look like you're a Spider Gwen, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I look like I'm in yeah. the, the hood. Yeah, it's good. It's cool. It's good. And yeah, uh, we're both trying to, we're just both trying to take our own type of photos, make your own <laughs> kind of music. Uh, yeah, I really like this. I like that I'm photobombing your selfies. Yeah. And then next up, Ellen, I don't know how I've got this onto the clipboard, because it's an animation, but it's, it's a flip book. So let's right, just, right. just start flipping now. There we go, flipping through. Look at this. It's amazing. This is Corinx 101 has sent us this. They've done this. It's amazing. It is an animation of uh, the um, quiz that I gave you, the medieval quiz the from Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yeah. The ruthlessly historically <laughs> accurate quiz. Let's, let's watch a little bit of this amazing animation. When night falls, you are still a good half hour's walk from the village. Do you A, press on, you're nearly there, or B, Bed down for the night at the roadside. You'll be more refreshed in the morning. Both of those sound like bad ideas. Press on. You press on despite an almost total lack of light. You don't know what kills you because it happens in the dark. <laughs> Lose a life. Damn it. You offer your cloak, somehow having missed the symptoms of the highly contagious sweating sickness, the scourge of your era. Your exposure to his infection kills you within hours. Lose a life. You look at the board, but of course, like most people of your time, you cannot read. <laughs> It's, it. it's weird you would forget that. It is a symptom of the sweating sickness. <laughs> Lose a life. <laughs> you join in with the dancers, swept up in the collective dancing mania that killed many in medieval times. No! Lose a life. <laughs> oh, that was really fun. You, <laughs> you chose all the things I wanted you to do. I, I like the way they really got down there. 
Yeah, you're married, <laughs> eyes. I don't trust you anymore. Why would you not trust me? <laughs> do you know, because... Don't blame the quiz master. Just because... I do, because on the way to the studio today, you were like, remember that quiz? <laughs> I was so ruthlessly mean to you. <laughs> I, I believe so what I said really. was when I was ruthlessly historically accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's an amazing animation. Thank you very much for sending it. It must have taken ages and it, oh, it looks so good. Thank you all for your amazing artwork as usual, guys. So, Ellen, we've come to the end of Show of the Weekend and what have we learned? <laughs> I've got some issues regarding Shadow of the Deer. <laughs> and I'm really sorry that I made you sit here for 20 minutes. It's It'll fine. be edited down for you guys, but... <laughs> I'm Fine. sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I genuinely enjoyed it. That was an, an epic outpouring of emotion. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did corner my sister at one point, and she doesn't play games as much as me, so she was just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> she, she's not played the Tomb Raider games. She's more of a Batman she, and Lego person. She didn't ask and, like, for this. She's... She, she was just like, I don't know the team Reddick. Okay, okay. <laughs> and you're like, I'm an other <laughs> the merchant. <laughs> well, we've learned about that. We've learned about Greek myths. You've met cameraman John. Yeah. What an amazing time. What an amazing time we've had. I don't know why I suddenly feel like we have to explain, like, show the weekend's educational value. We have no duty to educate, no. which is just as well, frankly, because... No. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, we have some very exciting news. Um, uh, we mentioned last week, but yeah. we are coming to PAX Australia. Uh, the schedule is up now. We are going to be doing a movie night, which is uh, really, really awesome. I'm very, very uh, exciting for that. Bad video that. game films. Yeah, yes. it's going to be, it's going to be cool. Uh, we're going to be doing signings, and we're going to be appearing on panels as well. So yeah, mm. check out the schedule. And if you are near Melbourne, or if you can get to it, then why not come say hi and see us? We're yeah. very, very excited. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but for now, Ellen, do you feel like you're ready to share? Thank you guys for watching. There's the blue one. And... Hold on.